praise to the Lord, the Almighty, the King of creation. Oh, my soul, praise him, for he is your health and salvation. Come on, now to his altar draw near, joining in glad adoration. Praise to the and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, and the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And with your spirit. Brethren, let us acknowledge our sins, and so prepare ourselves to celebrate the sacred mysteries. I confess to Almighty God, and to you, my brothers and sisters, that I have greatly sinned in my thoughts and in my words, in what I have done and in what I have failed to do. My fault, through my fault, through my most grievous fault. Therefore, I ask, blessed Mary, ever virgin, all the angels and saints, and you, my brothers and sisters, to pray for me to the Lord our God. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. favor, O Lord, to your servants, and mercifully increase the gifts of your grace, that made fervent in faith, hope, and charity, they may be ever watchful in keeping your commands. 
through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God forever and ever. Amen. A reading from the Book of Wisdom. There is no God beside you who have the care of all, that you need show you have not unjustly condemned. For your might is the source of justice. Your ma mastery over all things makes you lenient to all. For you show your might when the perfection of your power is disbelieved. And in those who know you, you rebuck temerity. But though you are master of might, you trust with clemency. And with much lenience, you govern us. For power whenever you will attend you, and you toss your people by the deeds that those who are just must be kind, and you give your children good ground for hope, that you would permit repentance for their <coughs> sins. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Lord, you A reading from the letter of St. Paul to the Romans. Brothers and sisters, the Spirit comes to the aid of our weakness. For we do not know how to pray as we ought. But the Spirit himself intercedes with the expressible groanings. And the one who searched us know was he the intention of the Spirit, because he intercedes for the holy ones according to God's will. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God.
are you, Father, Lord of heaven and earth. You have revealed to little ones the mysteries of the kingdom. Alleluia, alleluia, alleluia. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to St. Matthew. Glory to you, O Lord. Jesus proposed another parable to the crowds, saying, The kingdom of heaven may be likened to a man who sowed good seed in his field. While everyone was asleep, his enemy came and sowed weeds all through the wheat, and then went off. When the crop grew and bore fruit, the weeds appeared as well. The slaves of the householder came to him and said, Master, did you not sow good seed in your field? Where have the weeds come from? He answered, an enemy has done this. His slaves said to him, Do you want us to go and pull them up? He replied, No. If you pull up the weeds, you might uproot the wheat along with them. Let them grow together until harvest. Then, at harvest time, I will say to the harvesters, First, collect the weeds and tie them in bundles for burning, but gather the wheat into my barn. He proposed another parable to them. The kingdom of heaven is like a mustard seed that a person took and sowed in a field. It is the smallest of all the seeds. Yet, when full grown, it is the largest of plants. It becomes a large bush, and the birds of the sky come and dwell in its branches. He spoke to them another parable. The kingdom of heaven is like yeast that a woman took and mixed with three measures of wheat flour until the whole batch was leavened. All these things Jesus spoke to the crowds in parables. He spoke to them only in parables to fulfill what had been said through the prophet. I will open my mouth in parables. I will announce what has lain hidden from the foundation of the world. Then, dismissing the crowds, he went into the house. His disciples approached him and said, Explain to us the parable of the weeds in the field. He said in reply, He who sows good seed is the son of man. The field is the world. The good seed, the children of the kingdom. The weeds are the children of the evil one, and the enemy who sows them is the devil. The harvest is the end of the age, and the harvesters are the angels. Just as weeds are collected and burned up with fire, so will it be at the end of the age. The Son of Man will send his angels and they will collect out of his kingdom all who cause others to sin and all evildoers. They will throw them into the fiery furnace where there will be wailing and grinding of teeth. Then the righteous will shine like the sun in the kingdom of their father. Whoever has ears ought to hear. 
The Gospel of the Lord. How good our Lord is, how patient. I look forward to being gathered into his barn. It will be interesting to see what the barn looks like, God willing, that we make it. But how patient God is with us. He lets the weeds and the wheat and the wheat grow together. He's patient. And we should think, Lord, if you dealt with me as I deserve, I could not stand. But you're patient. The patience of God saves the world. The impatience of man destroys the world. We are living in this culture, this woke culture, where you can be canceled so quickly. One strike and you're out. Right? If you say the wrong word and the media gets a hold of it and it, you're, you're destroyed, it's ruthless. How quickly you can be canceled. It's a funny thing, this culture we're living in, it permits everything. Anything goes but nothing is forgiven. Compare that with the church. The church says definitely some things are not permitted. Some things are wrong in all circumstances, but it forgives everything. What a contrast. And so our Lord says today, let the weeds and the wheat grow together until the harvest, and then I will do the separating. The next time you're frustrated with the church, then maybe the next time you're frustrated with the bishops and say, why don't you do something? Why don't you take a firm stand? Or maybe the next time you're frustrated with the culture and politics. Lord, why don't you send a lightning bolt down and show yourself? Why don't you intervene? Remember today's parable and what Jesus is up to and how his father works. He lets the weeds and the wheat grow together. He's patient. God's timing is always the best. For us, we want things done our way, and we want it faster, and we get impatient. That's when we make mistakes. The patience of God. Jacob Fesh, or I I think his name was Jacques Fesh, He killed a police officer during a bank robbery. He went to jail. Before he was executed for his crime in 1957, he underwent, he he deeply repented of his sin. And his writings are just beginning to emerge, his beautiful writings on mercy. He wrote back to his, his parents. His cause is up for canonization. Bartolo Longo, as a young man, got involved in fortune-telling and seances. He became a Satanist, but then he repented and a saint of the church. Augustine was involved in fornication and cohabitation. Augustine is one of the great lights of the church. Bruno Saren Kuma was, he's of Uganda. He was a violent young man. He was boastful, given to outbursts of fury, prone to drunkenness and lechery. But a couple of his friends approached him and told him he needed to shape up. And he took those words to heart, and by the grace of God, he repented. He underwent a profound conversion He died for the faith and is a saint of the church. The bigger they are, the harder they fall. Let's remember the dividing line between good and evil runs right through the human heart. Every one of us is capable of being a great saint or a terrible sinner. It's by the grace of God. Let's remember the patience of God that saves the world and the impatience of man that
that destroys the world. I believe in one God, the Father, Father Almighty, Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all things visible and invisible. I believe in one Lord, Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, born of the Father before all ages, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, consubstantial with the Father. Through him all things were made. For us men and for our salvation, he came down from heaven, and by the Holy Spirit was incarnate of the Virgin Mary and became man. For our sake, he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried and rose again on the third day in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is adored and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. I believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church, I confess one baptism for the forgiveness of sins, and I look forward to the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. To God the Father Almighty, may every prayer of our heart be directed, for it is his will that all humanity should be saved and come to the knowledge of the truth, his Son, Jesus Christ. That the shepherds of the church will walk tirelessly in serving Christ and his flock. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For greater devotion to the body and blood of Jesus, truly present in the Holy Eucharist, Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For blessings on all Christian marriages, that the love of husband and wife may show God's love to the world. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For all the faithful departed, that through the mercy of God they may rest in peace At this Mass, we pray especially for William Burns. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For those intentions we hold in the silence of our hearts. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord, hear our prayer. Lord God, our refuge and our strength, hear the prayers of your church, and grant that what we ask in faith we may truly obtain through Christ our Lord. Amen.
pray, my brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. O God, who in the one perfect sacrifice brought to completion varied offerings of the law, accept, we pray, this sacrifice from your faithful servants and make it holy as you blessed the gifts of Abel so that what each has offered to the honor of your majesty may benefit the salvation of all through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks, Father most holy, through your beloved Son, Jesus Christ. He is your word through whom you made all things, whom you sent as our Savior and Redeemer, incarnate by the Holy Spirit and born of the Virgin Mary fulfilling your will and gaining for you a holy people. He stretched out his hands as he endured his passion, so as to break the bonds of death and manifest the resurrection. And so with all the angels and saints, we declare your glory as with one voice we acclaim. Holy, holy, Indeed, holy, O Lord, the fount of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending down your Spirit upon them like the dewfall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed, and entered willingly into his passion. He took bread and giving thanks, broke it, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. 
we proclaim your death, O Lord, and profess your resurrection until you come again. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world. Bring her to the fullness of charity, together with Francis our Pope and Christopher our Bishop and all the clergy. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the blessed Virgin Mary, the mother of God, with blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the blessed apostles and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him, O God, almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Amen. At the Savior's command, informed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress as we await the blessed hope and coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom and the power and the glory are yours, now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Let us offer each other the sign of peace. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Take. 
Oh. 
Graciously be present to your people, we pray, O Lord, and lead those you have imbued with heavenly mysteries to pass from former ways to newness of life through Christ our Lord. Amen. A couple of announcements. We have a Gregorian chant conference coming up next weekend, and we're very blessed to have the director of music from uh, St. John's Seminary in Boston, who is available, uh, Michael Olbash, who will be with us. The details of the conference are in the back of the church. Also, the stained glass window series continues with Father Donald Noiseau, a priest of the Diocese of Springfield, Massachusetts. He will be talking about the guardian angels and the, our guardian angel window. That's this Wednesday, starting at 5 p.m. with evening prayer, followed by the presentation and light refreshments. The 40-hour devotion sign-up is in the back of the church, and that too will be, uh, actually the Gregorian chant weekend is the following weekend. The 40 hours devotion is this, com this coming next weekend. And then finally, after the 1030 mass this weekend, we say farewell to our seminarian, Ann Dean, who's been with us for two months. So uh, if you wish to wish him farewell. The Lord be with you. Bow down for the blessing. And may Almighty God watch over, bless, and protect you, the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Go forth. The Mass is ended. Thanks be to God.